Princess Tutu is an interesting show. One I finished less than half an hour ago and one that I decided I'm going to go review it right now because I have things to say about it. You know how when you watch a show, sometimes as you get further along, you lost the original spark that kept you interested. It just feels like it's dragging on and on, and you want to drop it, but you don't drop it because you want to see how it ends, even if you don't think it'll be that good. Oh yeah, that's how I was with Tutu. Around episode 19, 20 or so, I was like, I'm done. There's nowhere this is going that really excites me. But I figured I was close. I might as well finish it, especially with the reputation it has. Those last episodes are good. That last episode especially was good. So, yeah, that was a surprise. So, if you've never heard of Princess Tutu before, it is a magical girl anime from 2002. So, older than a lot of the shows I talk about. Specifically, it is one of the first dark magical girl shows before the age of Madoka and all those others that I like talking about. And it was interesting to see how different it was, because it felt really like a conventional magical girl show, just with a few twists thrown in, and a more tragic overtone, instead of everything being more happy-go-lucky. It also takes place in a fairy tale-like world, where the author is the one telling the story and narrating, and said author has a thing for tragedies. I love the author, by the way, he is amazing. But before I get too much into giving the show praise that it does deserve, I need to bring up the issues because there is a major one. And the fact is, is that the show was so slow. The last five or so episodes were amazing. Everything before that, kind of meh to varying degrees. It had a very episodic formula. The story of Princess Tutu is about this duck slash girl, duck, who is looking for the heart shards of the prince that she loves. So she turns into Princess Tutu, a magical girl, and then dances with the spirits and whoever is around to get the heart shards from the prince out and then gives them to the prince so he can regain his heart and get back to the great prince that he was. And unfortunately, it seemed like every episode was very formulaic in this way. Like they would have a little bit of an introduction with some of the characters, Duck would somehow go with the prince somewhere, they would find a heart shard, she would turn into Princess Tutu, help the person who had the shard resolve their problems, and get the shard back, and repeat for about 10 episodes. We did get a mid-season twist that changed things around, but after the twist, it became formulaic again, even though the formula had ended up changing some. And yeah, this was my major issue with the show, because it felt like, yes, they were going somewhere with the prince and his heart, and the raven who the prince had sealed, but it was just so slow getting anywhere. But yeah, that's my major complaint. Also, I didn't like the cat, he, like how he always wanted to marry the students and threaten them with that, like, it got old after a while. Moving on to the good, though, and one of the best things about the show are the characters, because they're conflicted with who they are and who they want to be. There's a lot in here about destiny, about the story that had been written for them, and if they should accept their fate or challenge it, and what happens if they do. This was a theme that went all throughout the show, but really came to fruition during the end. I do want to take a moment to talk about my favorite character in the show, Fakir, who is sort of an antagonist for a while, opposing Tutu, wanting the prince to say the same, thinking that he is protecting the prince by not letting him get his heart back. And well, it is interesting to see how he grows throughout the show, especially with his relationship with Princess Tutu and some other things that you learn about him as the story goes on. And then we got to the end. And then the ending that made me want to go make this review, even though I have no idea what I'm saying with it. Basically, what the ending did, it was able to build up the plot that it had been slowly going toward all along. And it combined the author, the narrator's idea of a tragic story with the characters who are trying to resist this tragedy as much as they can. It also explores the idea of how a person can make a difference through using their special abilities, and that even the weak among them can still do great things. Yeah. It's hard to talking about the ending of a dark magical girl show, even if it isn't completely dark, without any spoilers. I did that last week too. It was hard. And how am I going to find clips for this? I don't know. But this ending ended up really having a great emotional impact. And the show really was able to take this tragic idea and see, like, can it be overcome? I just love the author Drosselmeyer here because he is an outsider narrating, enjoying seeing what the characters do. As someone who enjoys writing stories himself, it is cool to, because I can relate to this. I like to see how the characters take on a life of their own, do things I don't expect, and be surprised at this. Like, there are times where Drosselmeyer looking at the stories like, wait, how did that happen? There goes my big idea. 
And it's just really cool. Drosselmeyer is great. He's probably one of my favorite villains in the anime now that I think about it. So the question for me, though, as a reviewer, is does this great ending make up for the lackluster everything else? And, well, kind of. This is not a show I will just say everyone should go watch, but it is a, a unique show even though it isn't that exciting a lot of times, and that is definitely something worthwhile for some people. If you are someone who likes these episodic shows, these more slow burn as you get to explore the world, even if it doesn't directly impact the plot, you might like this. And if you want something about the creative process of, about writing, you might like this too. There's also uh, the ballet, because ballet is a big part of it. They all go to school for ballet. Princess Tutu is like a great ballerina, and she uses her dancing to connect with people. So if you're into that thing, you might like this. I wasn't, so I was kind of bored during this part. But hey, something to consider. It actually feels like a combination of like Little Witch Academia with the whole magical girl thing, and recreators with the whole characters in a story thing. Yeah, interesting combination, I know. But hey, this show is at least interesting. So for a final score, I give it a 6.35 out of 10 and a rating of worth checking out. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.